Hi, I'm Mike. And each winter on the ranch, we fight the elements, the cold, the wind, and the snow. But it's not only us, it's every living animal here on the ranch that has to deal with it too. And it's our job to make sure that their life is as easy as possible, no matter how hard it makes ours. But we do have our little tricks. Today, we're gonna to take a look at stock water on the ranch and how we, like the best bartenders on the prairie, make sure that everybody can wet their whistle on our Wyoming life. Cool water, clear water, water. Welcome back to our Wyoming life and thanks for helping us explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. There are things on the ranch that are done one way. Well, just because they've always been done that way. Everybody's dealt with this, I think, and no one's thinking much about it or questioning it. The decision was made years ago, usually by somebody else, and that's just the way it is. Today, we're gonna question the norm a little bit, and if my father-in-law Gilbert was still around, this is the type of thing that would drive him crazy and tick him off. Because, well, it may not actually prove him wrong, but mostly because it took work to get to that conclusion. Please take the time to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Uh, that helps YouTube know to suggest it to others who like the same kind of videos you do and helps spread the message of agriculture and how important it is across the world. And thanks for your help doing that. Like I was saying, sometimes we do things one way because, well, that's the way we do it. And this year I've been slowly trying to change one little thing that means more work for me but it could save the ranch thousands of dollars. And I've had to do that without anybody noticing. You see, after Gilbert passed away, Aaron's mom is still here, of course, and she has final say in most things here on the ranch. She's been around long enough to know how Gilbert did things, and sometimes I have to do the old side shuffle to save the ranch money by changing how things have been done for years. And sometimes, it's as simple as water. H2O is the lifeblood of the ranch. Without it, in the form of rain and winter runoff, there would be no grass growing, no reservoirs, and no underground aquifers. Each cow drinks about 10% of her body weight in water per day, about 20 gallons of water. The closer she gets to calving, this goes up, and she'll double it during lactation. Water consumption is also dependent on climate conditions, feed types, production level, and salt intake. This time of the year, the temperatures drop and she'll actually be reducing her intake by about half of normal and taking in about 10 gallons per day. With around 150 cows out here, well, that means we have to be able to deliver 1,500 gallons of water each and every day. But that really isn't the challenge. We have wells, we have electricity, and all you have to do is pull a lever and you have water. The challenge is keeping the water liquid. For the month of January, our average high is 31 degrees. Our average low is 10. Our record low actually for this month was minus 36 back in 1930. Let's hope we don't have to deal with that again. With temperatures rarely getting above freezing for the month, the water is definitely an issue. Cows can lick ice and they can eat snow, but the water that they're gonna take into their systems doing it that way could actually outweigh the amount of energy that they're expending. So, keeping water open for the cows is essential. Gilbert always kept stock tank heaters in each water tank. These heaters are usually electric, but they can be propane powered, and their job is to heat the water to above freezing temperatures. But they do cost money to run. Up until this point, I've been trying to save the ranch money by breaking open water tanks each morning and afternoon busting the ice and scooping it out, making sure that the tanks are open for animals to drink. Now they will freeze again every night. Maybe an inch or so of ice will form. And my favorite tool for breaking ice is this, a trenching tool that can be sharpened to break through pretty easily. Careful though, the last thing you wanna do is put a hole in a tank. Trust me, I know. We have five different water tanks that we're gonna be looking at today the cow's main tank, the horse and steer tank that they share, 
the bull tank, and two heifer tanks located behind the barn and in the corrals. Each tank is cleared, just like we do every single morning. But today, we're gonna put in tank heaters and see how well they work and how they keep the water from freezing. Today, the temperature is in the low 30s. The sun is shining and the water is warming up. Water temps today are in the high 30s. It won't refreeze, but it will again tonight. So the sooner we get in the tank heaters, the better. I've found four tank heaters from last year. Two of these are sinking heaters and the other two are floating heaters. First thing we have to do is inspect them for any damage. And they all look good except for one sinking heater, which has exposed wires. That's no good. We're not gonna be able to use it again. Those wires could actually short out and electrocute or shock animals. So we need to make sure we don't use this one. The other three are tested and each one is working and heating elements are getting to over about 200 degrees pretty darn quick. Since we're a couple short though, we have to head into town for a trip to Govins Feed and Ranch Supply where we can pick out two new heaters and head back home to get them installed. These heaters are 1500 watt heaters using the same amount of power as about 33 laptop computers or the same as charging 300 cell phones. With five different tank heaters and in five different tanks running, that could actually be a whole lot of power and a huge expense for the ranch. Gilbert used to tell me, don't ever figure out what this whole operation costs, but I can't help it. Obviously knowing where your money is going is gonna be your best bet and ignoring it will simply cause trouble somewhere down the line. All right, so let's do the math and figure out how much these tank heaters actually cost to run. We're gonna start out with the cost of the heaters themselves. Just bought two of them. I know they run about 50 bucks a piece. That's where we're gonna start. We already have $150 into the deal for all five of these tank heaters. But now we have to talk about power. Our electricity rate here is actually really low. Last I looked, we were ranked 46th in the United States and our rate here is about nine cents per kilowatt hour. One kilowatt hour is 1,000 watts consumed in a one hour period and a 1,500 watt heater then uses 1.5 kilowatts per hour. At nine cents, it's 13 and a half cents per hour to run it. If it runs constantly 24 hours a day, then we're looking at $3.24 to operate it for each day. The heaters do have a thermostat, however, that turns them off and on. So let's say they run only 75% of the time. We can round that to $2 and 50 cents per heater per day. Take that by the month, and we're at $75 per heater. Take that times five, and we're at $375 a month to keep the water open for the cows to drink. Keep in mind that I'm actually rounding these numbers here. So I, you know, if somebody wants to make a comment that says it's actually $376.65, that's fine. But just know that I'm rounding these numbers. Up until this year, I've had to put out heaters in December. They ran until the end of March. That's four months of power at $1,500. Add in the cost of the heater, and we're at
The next morning, no tanks are frozen. The heaters did their job. In fact, even though we had lows down into the low 20s last night, the tanks are still well over 50 degrees. No doubt about it, they work. But are they worth it? I told you that I've put off putting tank heaters in this year to save the ranch some money. Actually, I've only saved the ranch about $375 by not running heaters for the month of December. But let's figure out, was it worth it? On average, I spend maybe an hour a day breaking ice and cleaning tanks. We figured out earlier that each tank heater uses about $2.50 worth of power per day. By my math, the time that I spend breaking ice is worth about 12 bucks an hour. That's not too bad. More than I make haying, more than I make shoveling manure or cleaning stalls, and it really is a tangible way to save money on the ranch. Is it easier to drop a stock tank heater in and walk away and not have to worry about breaking ice? Heck yeah, it is. But these are some of the decisions that we have to make. We might only leave the tank heater in for the coldest months of the year. In fact, next month, our average low is supposed to be up to 15 degrees, and I'm sure that's gonna feel like Palm Springs compared to January. Thanks again for joining me today. I know that uh, the whole economics of the ranch thing, probably the mo not the most exciting topic in the world, but it's one that we actually have to look at every single day. Is it more economical to heat the water or more cost effective to go out and break ice? These questions are asked with almost every single decision that we make here on the ranch, whether it's buying a new tractor or mowing ditches. When profit margins are very slim, a little elbow grease can really go a long way. The money saved by not running a few stock tank heaters for a few months might be enough to buy a new tire, or oddly enough, repair a well that we just can't live without. Be sure to subscribe and feel free to comment. Where have you been able to make things work by doing it the old fashioned way? Was it better in the long run? Or did you end up needing rotator cuff surgery from breaking all that ice? Either way, I'll see you again soon. And until then, have a great week, and thanks for joining us in our Wyoming life.